I greet you in the name of the one who sanctifies and justifies us through God's Holy Spirit. As you gather for your conference assembly, you begin the work of the church in assembly. This year's assembly will be focused on our journey with Jesus. There are many biblical stories about Jesus and his journeys, but the one that stands out for me is the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. As they walk along, Jesus joins them, except he's not recognized, perhaps because they cannot believe the witness of the women who went to the tomb. They do not believe that Jesus lives. They witness to Jesus with the saddest expression in the Bible. But we had hoped. These disciples had lost hope, yet Jesus, unrecognized, journeys with them. I had the opportunity to journey to the Holy Land last year and to meet with Bishop Azar of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. As Christians, they are persecuted as Palestinian Christians in the very place where Jesus walked. Yet he offered hospitality to Connie and to me by inviting us to his home for a feast. One of the aspects of journeys is that we often become a guest and experience hospitality even when we do not expect it. Such is the nature of journeys, unexpected hospitality. On the road to Emmaus, the followers of Jesus invite Jesus to stay with them for it was evening. And at the end of the journey, they stop, and Jesus, the stranger, becomes the host. He breaks the bread, and their eyes were opened to Jesus' presence. So it is when we journey with Jesus, we discover Jesus' presence, at times even when we are not aware, and we realize that Jesus has been with us all along, especially in those moments when we have lost hope. Jesus is with us in our journeys, even in the difficult times of pandemic and a looming war. Our faith is not about our own understanding and strength, but rather God's Spirit calling us through the gospel to bring us to faith in Jesus, who is traveling the road with us. I look forward to sharing a time of journey and unexpected presence of Jesus among us as we gather for assembly. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lau, Vice President of our Lower Susquehanna Synod, and I want to share with you some information about the when and who of Synod Assembly. Synod Assembly Edification Day will be held March 14th with the business session beginning Friday evening, June 3rd, and Saturday, June 4th. We're asking you to send voting members one man and one woman from each congregation, and for larger congregations, those who have more than 500 baptized members, an additional lay person um, should be sent to assembly, preferably a youth, young adult, a person of color, or someone who has primary language other than English. Voting members are expected to attend the entire assembly, Friday evening, June 3rd, through Saturday, June 4th. Voting members must be registered by April 30th. Remember that date. No registration will be accepted after that date due to the need for us to establish credentials for voting in advance of the assembly. Registration opens March 1st. Early bird period for registration at a reduced rate ends on March 31st. Online registration is available and very simple. If you need to seek a refund for a registration, please do not seek a refund through PayPal, but request it from the Synod Treasurer's Office. Thank you. Hello, I'm your Assembly Manager, Pastor Dana Buck Hansen. I'm here to let you know that this year's Synod Assembly will be entirely digital. Voting members will participate in the assembly via Zoom. Please consider using a computer or watching the sessions with a group on a larger screen. 
conferences or congregations may want to host watch parties together so you can help each other with questions and technology needs. Each voting member will need a separate device for voting, such as a smartphone or tablet. We will be using the VVox app for voting again this year. A video on how to prepare for assembly will be released closer to that date. Test your tech practice sessions with Zoom and the voting platform will also be held. Digital instructions with the Zoom link and the voting credentials will be provided through an email a few days before the business session of the assembly. Please do not share these instructions with anyone else. They are for you only. Visitors and guests will be able to watch the proceedings live stream through our Vimeo website. Thank you. Hello, I'm Pastor Beth Schlegel, Secretary of the Lower Susquehanna Synod, and I come to you today with information about elections and memorials and resolutions. First, elections. Each conference this year will be electing a secretary. Newly elected secretaries will be installed at the Senate Assembly. The Senate Assembly will elect Senate Council members and a member of the Board of Directors of Susquehanna University. For the Synod Council elections, there is a new slate this year for laypersons of any gender. This will help us comply with changes to the Constitution. The slate may include men, women, or anyone identifying with a different gender identity. The nominee information forms have been revised to allow nominees to indicate a gender identity and anyone indicating other or prefer not to answer will be placed on this new slate. Uh, others may be placed on that slate as well, depending on how many responses we get. All persons nominated from the floor must give prior consent to be nominated and must submit the nominee information forms by 8.15 a.m. on Saturday morning. So please keep that in mind. Uh, as we progress to that point. Secretary elections at conference assemblies uh, are by written ballot. Uh, the bishop provides a slate of at least two names for each conference, and the balloting takes place then among the voting members present. So be sure that is on your agenda for conference assemblies. Now to memorials and resolutions. Uh, there is information on our Synod website, Synod Assembly page, uh, providing guidelines for constructing memorials and resolutions. A memorial is an action that is directed to the church-wide assembly, but it must be approved through the Synod Assembly. Uh, it, any memorial or resolution requires at least two signatures, uh, but may also come from a conference assembly. Uh, so there are guidelines for that. Resol a resolution is an action directed to the synod assembly, and again, uh, requiring two, at least two signatures or can come from a conference assembly. The deadline for submitting memorials and resolutions is May 1st to my office, bschlegel at lss-elca.org, uh, electronically, please, uh, so that they can be um, reflected on by the Memorials Committee and the Committee of Reference and Council. Please keep whereas clauses to a minimum when constructing these memorials or resolutions since they are not read aloud at the Senate Assembly or the Churchwide Assembly. And if there are budgetary implications, please consult with the treasurer beforehand uh, and include that information in the resolution. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact my office, but by all means, first read the document on our website that provides clear guidelines uh, regarding those matters. So I hope that this will be helpful to you uh, in this year as we prepare for conference assemblies and synod assemblies, and I look forward to further sharing the mission of our synod with you. Thank you.
Thank you for giving your time to us. We really want to get the message across about Synod Assembly, and it is a real wonderful experience to spend time with your siblings in Christ from the wider church. If you have questions about registration, please contact our registrar, Connie Dunlop, at this email address. If you have other questions about the Synod Assembly, please contact one of these persons. Again, thank you for your time, and we hope to see you at Synod Assembly. God's blessings to all.